This is Echo 3, and let's continue our discussion about career mode and learn about making maneuvers. After completing a few contracts in the last discussion, we now have some funds with which to upgrade our facilities. Right-clicking on a building, a pop-up menu appears. Here, the cost to upgrade the facility is shown, as well as the effects of the next higher level when we hover the cursor over the upgrade button. I've decided to upgrade the mission control and the tracking station. Now we will have the ability to make maneuver nodes. I would like to upgrade the VAB and the launch pad so we can build and launch bigger rockets, but we don't have the funds for that. But we do have enough to upgrade the astronaut complex. That will let our Kerbals perform extravehicular activities so we can collect more science. Over to Mission Control, let's pick up a couple contracts. With the upgraded facilities, a flyby of the MUN is now quite doable. It should also give us the opportunity to gather more science. Since we can have two active contracts, let's choose one that we can complete during the MUN flyby. As a guideline, I like to fit as many contracts into as few launches as possible in order to maximize the funds. I think it is helpful to be picky about what contracts you try to do. Think about what you can easily do with the technologies and skills you have. Alright, now that we've decided on the missions, let's design a rocket. We still don't have many parts available because we didn't upgrade the VAB and the launch pad, so we'll have to do the best we can with what we have. This is one of the fun aspects of career mode, trying to achieve a mission with all of these restrictions. We are limited to 30 parts and 18 tons and are still quite lacking in available parts on our, and our mission is to fly by the MUN and return. This build is going to start off similarly to previous builds. Since we are only going to the MUN, we can forgo a heat shield. And because our Kerbal Knot can EVA, we can reuse some of our experiments. I am not using the P-Pod because it doesn't have reaction control wheels and reaction wheels are going to be the only way we can control this rocket during the first part of its ascent. I'm going to stick on the radial decoupler to complete our secondary contract. And I'm going to add a battery because we haven't unlocked solar panels, so this stored battery power is the only electricity we're going to have for the entire mission. If you notice, I'm changing the priority on the battery and making it higher so that it will drain first before it gets decoupled. Let's make sure to add some science experiments. We have contracts paying for the launch, so we might as well get as much science as possible out of this. I really wanted to have a science junior on this mission too, but I just couldn't get the Delta V budget to work out. Oh well, the joys of an early career compromise. I'm going to use the most efficient engine that we have unlocked, the Terrier, for this upper stage to give us lots of Delta V once we are in the vacuum of space. Now this is going to be a three-stage rocket, with the bottom two just for the ascent. The middle stage uses a swivel engine. Although heavier than the Reliant, it is able to gimbal and has a slightly higher ISP in the upper atmosphere. This will help accelerate the rocket through the middle atmosphere of Kerbin. Since it will still be operating in some thicker atmosphere, I'm adding three small fins for stability. For the lower stage of the rocket, we can use the Thumper. It isn't able to gimbal, but it will get us up as a cheap way and it will get us high enough that our engines won't have too much problems. We should add a few fins for stability too. Alright, time to name the rocket. What should we call this thing? Well, I'm not very creative, so we'll just call it the Mun Flyby. And, like any good Kerbal Knot, we need to make sure we check our staging. Alright. I think we're set. Let's go to the MUN. A gravity turn with this rocket is difficult, as we only have the pod's reaction wheels for control for the first stage. But once we activate the swivel, we'll have lots of control. We'll be able to get our rocket on a good trajectory for orbit. By the time we need to use our final stage with the Terrier, we'll be high enough in the atmosphere that the fact that the engine is optimized for a vacuum won't be a big deal. On the lower left hand side of the screen, I have opened the Maneuver Mode menu. It will show our orbit information so I don't have to check the map view to see our apoapsis. I'm aiming for around 75 kilometers. Once we get that high, I will create a maneuver to plan our, orbi our orbital insertion burn. Once in orbit, we can plan our maneuver to the MUN. I'm planning on using a free return trajectory, meaning 
our orbit will pass on the front side of the Mun's orbit, so we will get ejected from the Mun's sphere of influence retrograde to its orbit. Once in orbit, we can plan our maneuver to the Mun. I'm planning a free return trajectory, meaning my orbit passes on the front side of the Mun's orbit, so we will eject the Mun's sphere of influence retrograde to its orbit. In general, getting to the Mun takes about 860 meters per second of delta V. We can place a maneuver node on our orbit and drag the prograde marker out until our new orbit touches the Mun's orbit. Then we can drag the node around on our orbit until we get an encounter. I like to focus on the Mun and use the finer maneuver controls on the bottom left to be more precise. Now, let's discuss the maneuver node. When you create a node, there are six options. Prograde, to increase your velocity in the direction you are headed. This will raise your orbit on the opposite side. Retrograde, to decrease your velocity and lower your orbit on the opposite side. Radial out and radial in. These are coplanar with your orbit and perpendicular to your current vector. And lastly, normal and antinormal. These are perpendicular to your orbital plane and used to make inclination changes. For this mission, we do not need to worry about making an inclination change because the MUN is in the same orbital plane that we are. But you can check out my rendezvous and docking tutorial to learn more about the hows and whys of normal and antinormal and understanding the ascending descending nodes. When you right click on the maneuver node, a cancel option appears, as do two blue icons. These are the previous and subsequent orbit buttons, so you can plan a maneuver X amount of orbits later. Since the maneuver planner assumes an instantaneous change in velocity, it is best to be halfway through your burn when you actually get to the node. Or, you can just enable the advanced burn timer and go by the countdown timer on the bottom. Ah, uh, I've just realized that some YouTubers have just discovered this function. I've been using it for a while and it is great the squad has added to the game. At the month, we will be plotting a small maneuver at our periapsis in order to get our orbital path back around Kerbin low enough that it will enter the atmosphere. Well, this burn will be prograde in our orbit around the Mun's It is retrograde relative to Kerbin's orbit. What this all means is, for a free return trajectory, it doesn't cost much delta V, and Jebediah will be able to return with all the good science he has been collecting. As a reminder, make sure you are collecting as much science as you can. Don't forget to be doing EVA reports, taking temperature scans and pressure readings at every opportunity you can get. Now we are burning prograde to get our orbit back so our periapsis is low enough that it is now in the Kerbin's atmosphere. And actually, I burned a little too much, and my periapsis was too low. And I would like that around 35 or so kilometers. So I'm going to do a quick radial out burn, which will lower my apoapsis and raise my periapsis. Now we are setting ourselves up for a nice ocean landing in Kerbin. Cold of space is gone and we are going to enter the nice warm oceans of Kerbin's equatorial regions. Alright, remember, gather as much science as we can. We've got a few new biomes we're over, so I'm EVAing to get those. Now we're going to decouple right about here or so as I'm setting up just exactly where I want to be using the last of our fuel. Okay, we can ditch our engine section and enter the atmosphere. Things are heating up, but Jeb is going to be glad to be home. And we're going to have lots of juicy science we can take back and spend, as well as a lot of funds that we made for this MUN flyby. Then we can go back to the Kerbal Space Center and spend them on all kinds of nice new toys. There we go. Oh, hey, we got some new biomes. Let's go get some more EVA reports. Uh, it is a great thing to unlock the um, EVA by upgrading the um, uh, upgrading the uh, astronaut complex. All right, there is all our science. Lots of good stuff there, and we got some more funds. 
Let's go back to the Space Center here and go to the R&D building. In the R&D building, we can finish unlocking all branches that cost 45, fun, uh, 45 science. And we can pick one that costs 90. There are so many useful technologies in this tier. We're going to have to decide what we want. As I look over all of them, I am trying to decide and I end up going with the one that unlocks the spark engine. This is called propulsion systems and I choose it primarily because of this engine. It is one of the lightest engines in the ant game. It is one of the lightest engines in the game and although it doesn't have as high an ISP as the terrier, it is so lightweight it still makes a better choice for smaller craft and it actually is a good engine for a Munlander. I think maybe that's where we're going to head next. And, yeah, boy, it gets hard to decide what you want sometimes when you only have so much science and there's all these good technologies. We have enough funds to improve the VAB and the launch pad, so I think we're going to do that. That'll let us build bigger and better rockets and go further and collect more science. Thanks for joining me on Career Mode Part 2.